Okay, guys, continuing with the videos. Uh, now that we have the parent is created, we're going to be creating the lab. We're going to be setting up the lab. For that, we're going to use three virtual machines. And in the end of this recording, this is what we should have. We should have a NAT connected to an external network as well as an internal network. Uh, we're going to have a DC with DNS. We're going to have a well, the SQL and the SCCA machine, we're just going to create it. We're going to join it to the domain, but we're not going to install any of these two roles as just yet. We're going to be creating ibra.com and we're going to be using the 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 slash 8. All right. So let's go ahead and let's create, first of all, three virtual disk, virtual hard disk. BHDS. We're gonna be a different. We're gonna be creating difference in disk. Uh, differences between the disk are well explained over here. I'm pretty sure the professor already explained the disk. Uh, we're gonna be creating difference in disk. We're gonna call the first one NAT, and it's asking of for the um, for the folder or that parent disk. The parent disk that we're going to be using is the 2016 that we created before. We're going to copy this for laziness uh, and click finish. That was the first disk. We're going to create the other two by the same token, the same things. We're going to call this uh, DC. Again, the parent disk. Is the 2016 we created, and that's perfect. And the third, but not least, the difference in, and we're gonna call it SCCM. Parent disk 2016. Click next and finish. Uh, now we're gonna be creating the three virtual machines that we mentioned before. Uh, same token, we're going to be creating the NAT, generation two machine. We're going to give it 2048 for startup and then dynamically uh, dynamic memory. We're going to connect it to both interfaces. Why? Because the NAT has two interfaces, one connected to the internal network, one connected to the external network. But as you can see, I can only choose one over here. So I'm going to go back inside and then I'm going to add the second one. Uh, it's asking for the virtual hard drive. Do you want to create one? No, because we already created our hard drives. The hard drives are over here. I'm going to choose the one for NAT. If you see the hard drive itself is only four four megabytes as at this moment. Once it boots, then it's gonna take up uh, the necessary space. Gonna create that and finish. Like I said over there in the wizard, you only have the option to create one NIC, one network in interface car. So we're gonna add another one. And since this is connected to the internal network, we're going to connect this to the external network. I'm going to click OK. And let's boot this machine up. Let's double click it to start. All right, let's minimize this and then let's create the other two machines. Two machines, this is DC. Generation 2 machine. 2048 for starters and then dynamically and this one was just going to connect it to the internal network all right we have the NAT over here NAT and the HCP I'm going to show you guys how to do that later it con it's has two interfaces, one for the external network over here, and then one interface for the internal network over here. Every other machine that I create is going to be connected to the internal network. All right. So that said, we're going to, the this is the DC, right? Yeah. This is going to be connected to the internal network. 
we're going to select the hard disk that I already created. And we're going to finish. Let's go back in here and create the last machine. And we're going to call it SCCM. Generation 2. 2048 for startups, then dynamically is going to be connected to the internal network. And we're going to select the hard drive for the SCCM machine. That should do it. All right, let's go back to the NAT. The NAT is still booting. We're going to boot these other two machines let that go through the out of the box experience. Actually, let's leave this machine off for now. We're gonna be using these two anyway. Uh, let's go back over here. Always look at the top of the screen so you can see which machine I'm working on. This is the net. We're gonna be using all the defaults, the product key, we're gonna do this later. License, accept, and password. After that, you're gonna see that I do have my two, my two users that I created on the parent disk. I'm just gonna use my user. Let's see where this machine is at. It's getting ready. Okay. And okay, this is the DC machine. Okay, let's go through the same process that we just went. Uh, Proto key, we're gonna skip this. License, yes. Password. For the default administrator account. gonna log in. NAT should be up. As you can see, uh, the clock is not here. We have Google Chrome and Windows Server Manager did not pop up like I set it up. Okay, so uh, what are we? This is the NAT. All right, let's start by configuring a few things. First of all, in the NAT machine, we're gonna change this name. We're gonna call it as it is, NAT. and we're going to have to reboot this machine. Let's go do the same thing in the other machine. This is my DC. So let's just go ahead and rename this. And of course, we're going to have to reboot. I'm going to go reboot these two machines, and then I'm going to log back in, and then we should take it from there. All right, guys, I rebooted both of the machines, and I have logged in. If we see over here, at the top of the screen, and in the NAT, the NAT machine, and Everything is as I like it. NAT, uh, remote desktop is enabled, Eastern Star, Eastern Time, and we're gonna go ahead and continue. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is add roles and features to the NAT machine, and we should not do that just yet. 
Okay, let's configure the IPs on these two machines. Uh, as you can see, one of them is already connected. This is already connected, so I know for a fact that this is the external network. My DHCP server already gave this machine a, an IP configuration. So this is my external network. And I don't know why didn't it take. So I'm gonna call it external. The other one, I'm gonna call it internal. This is the only machine that is gonna have two interfaces for now. Again, I don't need to touch this for the time being. Uh, the internal network, we're gonna configure this. As you remember, we are in the 10.0.0 network. So I'm just gonna put 10.0.0.1. Subnet mask, default gateway, never two gateways on the second uh, um, on one machine so the first one already has one so don't worry about the second one DNS we're gonna point to my D uh, to my DC my DC even though it's not created yet but it's going to be 10.0.0.2 we're gonna close this out and then we're gonna configure the IP addresses on the DC. You might wanna rename it uh, or not, that's completely up to you guys. But since it's the only need, it's the only interface that you have, then it should be okay. This is the internal network. And we're gonna give that 10.0.0.2 Gateway 10.0.0.1 which is my router and DNS okay since this is gonna be the primary DNS for my internal network I had to have a, D a DNS for this DC so I could put the one in my original network but in this case I'm just gonna put Google's DNS since it's gonna be connected to the internet it's gonna be connecting to Google after that then it's gonna go back and give everybody in my internal network DNS all right it's connected to the network yes and we can close this out let's go back to the net and then refresh this and as you can see, the external network is DHCP, and then internal network is the IP that I gave him. I'm gonna go to add roles and features. We're gonna go through the wizard, and we're gonna install remote access. Gonna continue next features nothing remote access in the role services we're gonna be selecting routing once you select routing it asks you for the different features and you add features you're gonna click next 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 and install this is gonna take a second so we're just gonna head set back sit back Okay, once the installation has succeeded, we're gonna close this out. We're gonna, not gonna go there. We're gonna go back to tools and we're gonna go to routing and remote access. Routing and remote access. Right click, configure. Gonna go through the process. We're gonna set up a NAT, and that didn't go well. So let's gonna close this out for a second. I'm gonna refresh. Again, routing and remote access. We're gonna right click and configure. It's gonna set up a NAT. 
and now we picked it up. Uh, it's asking us for the NAT internet connection, the one that it's connected to the public network. My public network, again, is the external. We're going to click it OK and finish. That should, that should do it. Once uh, the NAT is set up, my internal network should have internet access. And to prove that, let's go back here to the DC and let's see if we can access the internet. Yes, 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 let's go something. Something like Yahoo. Yahoo. Okay, that was dumb. And there we go. We do have internet access. That's fine. So let's close this out. Let's close this out. And we already finished with the NAT. We're going to come back to set up the ACP server in the same machine. But as of right now, we're just going to leave it here. Let's go set up our DC. And over here, I am on my DC. We're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. And we're going to go through the wizard of creating a DC. Active Directory Domain Services with the, all the features. Next. No features. ADDS is telling you about a couple of new things to note. Uh, you can go ahead and read it. Confirmation. Uh, ADDS does require a, rest, a restart, so make sure you select restart if necessary. Click yes and install. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we should be right back. Okay, once the DC configuration has been installed. We're going to have to promote this to a domain controller. We're going to go ahead and click that, and we're going to go through the wizard of making this a domain controller. I don't know in which part of the Microsoft server you guys are, so I'm going to go through it. I'm not going to be explaining uh, a lot of what it is. I'm hoping that you guys already know, or you're going to get there eventually in the future. All right, so we're going to add a new domain. We're going to add a new forest. It's going to be I write that com. The functionality we can check it over here. It's asking us for the global global catalog, DNS, all of those things. Again, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the master restore mode password, I'm not going to get into that, but let's keep it simple. Uh, delegation for the DNS, this is an error message. It's not an error message. It's a warning telling us that we do not own the DNS server. So it's going to be pulling information from the internet. It's going to be pulling information from somewhere else. This is completely OK. All right, so if you don't see this error over here, something went wrong in the process in the previous steps. So go ahead and re-step everything that redo everything that you did. All right, so we're going to click Next just to continue with the wizard. going to click next once again. Everything as default. We're going to review and it's going to run the pre-check. It's going it's going to run the pre-check. The pre-check is the prerequisites. It's just to make sure that the computer is actually connected to the internet that it has uh, all the other information that it has over here. You can all go through the 
you can go through the information to the results and you can see over here that says pre-check prerequisites check completed all right we're gonna go ahead and install once this finishes up installing it's gonna reboot the machine and we should go back in there and continue with the lab in the meantime while this is installing I'm gonna go ahead and first of all get rid of this server manager screen this is my main machine so my room machine so I'm just gonna close it I don't need it and the hyper B manager over here I'm just gonna bring it to the taskbar just for easy access since I'm already here I'm gonna go ahead and start the SCCA machine remember that the SCCA machine has not been CS prepped has not has not gone through the process all right so we're gonna go back here and continue waiting for the active directory domain service once it's installed like you see it's completed it's gonna ask me to restart it's not gonna ask me to restart it's gonna restart on its own and once it reboots we should not have a local account is going to make this machine a domain controller making it a domain account only I'm going to go ahead and log in and let's see if we take it from there okay guys as you guys can see uh, I waited for the machine to reboot I logged in into the DC and it's as you can see the domain controller for ibright.com once the image once this machine is it's or it's booted uh, let's go ahead and deal with the DNS DNS uh, I hope uh, you are in the class already and you know what it does and I'm not gonna get into it you see that we have a forward lookup sum, look but we do not have a reverse lookup sum. So we're going to go ahead and create the reverse lookup sum. Primary DNS to all DNS replication, IPv4. And we're going to be creating the network 10.0.0. We're going to create nets, and that should take care of it. Once this is done, once the DNS is done, it should be good. Uh, this machine, we can close all of this out. And let's go back. Uh, as you can see also, I booted the SCCN. I logged it in. Uh, I gave it a name. And I gave it an IP address. Once everything is set up in the SCCN, let's going to go ahead and join this machine to the domain. ibright.com it's going to ask us for credentials uh, welcome to ibright.com and again we're going to have to restart this machine while it does that let's join the net also to the domain usually on a regular environment environment you should never add the net computer to the domain I don't think my honestly cannot think of a reason why would you do it in testing purposes and in lab purposes we are joining this computer to the domain for the simple fact that we gonna install DHCP on this machine as well just to keep the roles uh, condensed and just to keep uh, the minimum amount of machines possible once this is joined to the domain again it's gonna reboot it's gonna ask us to reboot and i'm gonna pause the video over here for a second i'm gonna reboot and then i'm gonna log into the other to these two machines 
this machine has rebooted. Uh, I had to record this because I had to make a really make a point out of it. And in the SCCM machine, as you can see, remember not to log in as a regular admin, as a local admin. Right now, if you log in as I write, it's just gonna ask. It's just gonna log in into the machine. To log in into the domain, you have to go to other users over here, and then you're gonna specify which domain you're logging in and then which account you're using to log in. All right, that should take care of it. But remember to always, always log in into the domain, not the local admin. Okay guys, as you can see, I have already booted these two machines and I have logged in and uh, this is the SCCM machine, it's already part of the domain. And we're gonna confirm it by typing who am I? Who am I is gonna give us the iBright slash administrator meaning that we are part of the domain, we are logged in as a domain admin. Same thing, <laughs> same thing over here on the NAT machine. Remember to sign in as the administrator. I write a slash administrator. I'm gonna log in over here to the NAT. Uh, to continue with the configuration, we're gonna log in over here to the NAT. We're gonna make sure that we are. Who am I? We are logged in as I write administrator. So. To continue with the configuration, we're just going to install DHCP on this machine. NatIWrite.com. In order to do this, we're going to go to Add Roles and Feature, and it's telling us to wait for the collection inventory data. Okay. We should do that. Once that is completed, let's go ahead and add DHCP to our computer. Next, next, we're gonna be adding DHCP server with all the features. Uh, DHCP does not require a restart, but let's just check it. We're going to install this. Okay, guys, as you can see, the installation of the DHCP has succeeded. Uh, DHCP configuration is two parts. Uh, the, first, the first part is committing these two users, users and administrators, administrator to be able to use the DHCP server. It is a very, very simple. is a very, very simple process. Okay, let's, <laughs> that took me a second. All right, let's complete the DACP configuration. Like I said, it's a very, very simple process. Uh, it's just complete, next, and commit. That's the first part. The first part, once you see these two done and done, you should be good. I'm gonna close over here, close over here, and then let's go back over here to the DACP and configure the options for DACP. We can actually close this out. Let's blow this up so we can see better. 
again i don't know in which part of the server process you guys are but i'm just gonna go ahead not gonna explain too much uh not gonna deal too much on, on, on them i'm gonna skip all of the details That was not it. <laughs> Sorry, the options for the for the DACP server are seats. It's gonna validate my DACP. Seats and 15. Seats is the IP address of my DNS server. 15 is the domain name. I write that down. Once you get that, that's okay. Gonna create a new scope. It doesn't matter what you call it. And we're gonna give it a full scope. We're going to exclude the first 10 IP addresses for our servers. Yes, I want to configure. We're going to configure the router. Had to delete this and had to delete this. No win server. Yes, activate and that's finished. And everything should be good we're gonna close this out we are going to close this out and let's go back in into the DACP just to verify its functionality its functionality Check mark, check mark, green, green, everything's good. Once we verify that the DACP is actually working, everything should be okay, everything should be good. And that's it, that's it for the installation of the setup of the lab for our um, SCCM. Now, there is this one little tool that I like to use whenever I'm using multiple virtual machines. If you see, I'm gonna close all of this out. You can actually do a Google search of it. It's called, I already downloaded it and installed it. It's called the Remote Desktop Connect Manager. You can actually do a Google search of it and it's gonna pop out. Uh, let me show you. The Remote Desktop Connection Manager is the very first link over here. If you see, it is from November 18, 2014. Now, uh, Microsoft does not update this tool very often or at all, <laughs> but it's a really great tool if you want to download it and, and, and set it up on your lab. So it makes a lot, uh, it makes it so much easier. And, uh, let me show you how it works. The remote desktop manager just uh, creates a compilation of computers. Let me save this over here and let's say this is I write that com. And if you go through the options, let me go through the options over here. Again, this is completely optional. This is just me because I'm me. <laughs> Uh, uh, password my uh, username my password and my domain name uh, if you go through the options there's a bunch of options that you can set up uh, especially on the display the display you can play around with the display I figured mine out a long time ago 
my display is usually this. Once you set up, once you set up your options, once you set up your options, you, it, it's as easy as right click and add a server. Once you add a server, let's call it DC, the first, the first computer. You can actually right click it and you can connect to the server. Once you connect to the server, it should connect to the server. Once you connect to the server, you're gonna see it right here on the screen. And by the same token, let's add the other two computers that we have. We have the NAT. And we have the SCCM. By the same token, we're gonna we just added the NAT and the SCCM. We're gonna connect the server, and also the SCCM. We're gonna connect server. Once the three servers are connected, it's as simple as moving from one to the other. If you see over here and then DC and then my NAT and then and the SCCM, and you can move from one computer to another just with one click. It's a very uh, useful uh, tool if you, you can set it up, if you wanna play right around with it, it's actually awesome, all right? Uh, I believe that's it for this configuration of the server or the labs. Thank you very much for watching.